당연히 아이돌 쪽에서도 있습니다. 있고 연예계 쪽에서도 있고 배우 쪽에서도 있고 아무래도 이제 뭐 물론 커밍아웃을 하시는 분들도 계시지만 이제 아닌 분들은 숨기는 경우가 더 많았던 것 같아요. Welcome! If this is your first time here, I make video essays on LGBTQ plus issues in K-pop as well as other videos to adore my two biases. In this series, I react to problematic K-pop opinions. Nowadays, fans often urge other fans to stop assuming, but then proceed to say that the idols must be straight. Isn't that assuming as well? Is it bad? Many people aren't blatantly homophobic these days, but the trace lingers. It's internalized too deeply in the collective until it manifests into these two less obvious acts. Compulsory heterosexuality and heteronormativity. Compat is more about forgetting or denying that other sexual orientation exists and automatically assigning straight to a person. Erasure is the key word, including considering any discourse related to the word gay as embarrassing or taboo, like it's a slur that should be avoided at all costs. Come on, we're not in the 80s anymore. We passed the time when historians went the extra mile to hide or deny LGBTQ plus figures' sexuality. Some examples in K-pop are 1. In 2018, Fans urged to clear the search because of polls that show Jin being popular among gay and lesbian. Then queer fans fought back by trending Sok Jin gay. 2. The heated debate over the translation of Suga's Japanese interview that implies a panoramatic view, though his hyper part 3 lyrics fortify it. And 3. Erasure of Sehun's heartfelt confession. <laughs> We heard a lot about Jonghyun, but does anyone still remember he changed his profile picture into a protest statement by bisexual and transgender students at Sungunggye University? He even reached out to the students via DM to show his support. Sadly, fans are quick to diminish these things, so reluctant to start a conversation or correct those who take it too far. Whereas a healthy discussion could be beneficial for the community and teenagers who look up to them. Noticing subtext or allyship isn't the same as saying someone is gay. It's as simple as acknowledging that idols are allowed to have different sexual identities. That nonconformity isn't something to be stigmatized. Wouldn't it be better to say, Sehun, we support you no matter what, instead of, Sehun, it's not Okay, it was a joke. Heteronormativity is a set of expected behaviors, values, and roles that a person must fulfill according to their gender. Sometimes, it might seem harmless like wishing the idols to marry and have kids, but it can be hurtful because as queers, we know we can't have that, and we're going to upset people if we tell the truth. We are growing up with the burden of unattainable societal expectations. Besides, straight people often see queer relationships through heterosexual perspective by disregarding nuances. There is always someone who was. It's a very wise answer. Regardless of what they are, the point of a lesbian relationship is that there's no man there. We should get rid of such rigid gender roles. Another example is the common idea that fan service is there to protect the real relationship instead of a pure business strategy. Again, as a very heteronormative argument, queer baiting is queer baiting. It doesn't go hand in hand with protecting since it's harmful to the artist. The only party that profits is the company. Why cover up a gay relationship with another gay relationship? Why would it be dangerous for one, 
but it's okay to throw the other one under the bus. It doesn't solve anything. Shipping has been there since the first gen, and there is no proof that this theory ever happened. On the other hand, we do have cases of lavender marriage, and it has been well documented throughout history, especially in Hollywood. So, if a couple from a boy group needs a beard or a cover-up, they will use a woman for sure. It's just an excuse to hate the other members. So I do hear a lot of rumors because there are celebrities who are not open to the public but they are kind of like not shy to talk about it among their celebrity friends but I mean it can't be confirmed because I'm not actually friends with that celebrity. In a conservative and homogenous country, it's harder for a straight person to find gay people because there's no point in coming out to someone who won't understand our struggles. Still. It doesn't mean that being gay is a western value nor that we don't hang out with straight people at all. We can be friends with anyone, but sharing a secret is another story. One of your friends might be secretly gay too. There's no data yet on how many queers are there in South Korea, so let's see an example from the US. 6.4% males and almost 5% females identify as part of the LGBTQ spectrum. All idols are straight is impossible by statistics. There might be one in every 20 idols. Perhaps more, because arts and creative fields owe a lot to the gays. There are indeed difficulties in obtaining the data since it doesn't represent people who are still in the closet. The increasing trend represents how many people came out in recent years than a sudden, dramatic increase. The actual number could be higher than this. Queer people aren't unicorns, we always exist, we only hide sometimes, and since we exist, it's important to dive deeper into this topic. Some fans deny the possibility of their idols being gay based on appearances. Too manly for a man or too pretty for a woman. It's a funny argument. To begin with, how do we define looking gay? More or less, this misleading assumption is caused by inaccurate representation in the media, such as the flamboyant gay best friend trope. The media feeds us with such stereotypes that, more often than not, are an inaccurate representation of the queer community, even harmful. Let's take an example of being manly. People work out for different reasons. Some because of a hobby, some because they're health conscious, some not to be bullied anymore, and some because they want to appear more masculine to avoid being perceived as gay, hence exposing their secrets. Muscles don't play any part in divining sexualities, same with tattoos or facial hair. Look at all these muscular, tattooed men. They are all gay drag queens. An antithesis to fragile masculinity, like this man who's allergic to the color pink. I don't want people to think I'm a pussy. Because you're dating a guy? I'm still a man. Yeah, of course you're still a man. I don't have any problem with my manhood, and look at this. Look at this. When I'm sticking my f***ing wiener in your dad's butt. In a wig. In a wig. I have never questioned my manhood. I don't feel like a sissy. I feel like a diva. We exist on a spectrum. Lesbian couples can look like this, this, or this. Gay couples can look like this, this, or this. No one has to be more masculine or feminine. Some could pass as straight if they don't know them. There are also gay men in masculine occupations like Formula 1 driver, footballer, and 7 Summit mountaineer. As humans, we're inclined to perceive something depending on what we consume. To illustrate, Many people see Jungkook as too manly to be anything other than straight because he's the perfect portrayal of bad boys in teenage movies. But for me, there are times when I think, whoa, he looks like he came straight out of Queer Eye because I'm more exposed to that content. Instead of Jungkook, my point is we can't and shouldn't trust or bias judgment to assign any sexuality to a person. After all, we only see what we want to see and what they choose for us to see. The idol is gay? Good. 
The idol wants to date their bandmates? Great. We shouldn't push it, but we don't need to be enraged by the ideas either. In contrast, there are also those who insist that a person, often a man, must be gay. He can't be bisexual or pansexual, let alone straight. No consideration that perhaps using label is limiting because they're non-binary? Compulsory homosexuality is as bad as compulsory heterosexuality. In K-pop, people were shocked when Amber kissed a man in her music video. But why should we? Apart from it being a bold move, maybe we have that preconception in our heads because of how she presents herself as a masculine woman. Another case, when we see Yokon dancing in his high heels, it's so easy to think that he must be gay. The truth is, he doesn't have to. Is it surprising? Beyond K-pop, a severe accusation happened to Shawn Mendes. It started as a joke, but then it got out of hand to the point that Shawn himself made a statement to clarify things, coming out as straight. Was that enough? No. Some people refused to accept, saying how he behaves and his voice screams gay. How rude was that? Do you want them to be gay? Like, what's the benefit? Is it because you want a GBF now, a gay best friend? We've crossed the line a long time ago. The fact that Sean wanted to come out as gay just to please the media, that's enough. Harry Styles gets the same accusation because of the way he dresses. See, it's going to be a recurring problem as long as we have the wrong mindset. Appearances and actions Dancing, cooking, collecting dolls, liking a gay musicians do not equate to someone's sexuality. Wearing makeup, skirts, or cute ribbons on your hair does not and will never make you gay or a bottom. You're only gay if you're attracted to the same sex. That's all that's needed. No. Firstly, the term originates for businesses, not individuals. It's supposed to criticize music videos or movies that use queerness to gawk LGBTQ plus viewers with profit as the end goal, not representation. Unfortunately, I heard this accusation a lot for Jimin. Back to my previous point, maybe it's just the way Jimin expresses himself. Can't a man be soft and affectionate without his behavior being overly analyzed? Why should he hold back? if the members themselves don't complain. Even in business, it's a slippery slope when we don't know the true intention. Mamamoo invited drag queens as dancers in their performance, and lately, in their hip MV. As expected, some threw the queer baiting label. But from Solar's channel, we know that they became friends afterwards and she provided a platform for Nana the drag queen. Secondly, there's always a possibility that a person is queer themselves, yet they're still in the closet. We have to understand that coming out is not mandatory. They could do it for their family and their closest friends, but not to the public, or to none at all. One case that comes to mind is when online abuse forced Becky Arbatelli, the author behind the movie Love, Simon, to come out because he wrote a book based on a gay relationship. It was a mess, and it took a toll on her mental health. Pushing a person to come out will never be a good idea. You might be wondering, if gayness isn't based on appearances, then how about gaydar? What's the base for that intuition? Interestingly, some studies prove gaydar is quite accurate, though the reason behind the ability to read nonverbal cues is still debatable. It's also the reason we notice queer subtext better in popular culture. My hypothesis is related to empathy, a sense of identifying ourselves in that person, then relating to them on a personal level based on shared identity and experience. And it takes one to know one kind of way, like when you're traveling overseas and it's so easy for you to spot people from the same country as yours for no apparent reasons at all. In other words, a humble awareness of, oh, I can see myself in him, not, hmm, this man loves to touch each other's butt, sus. 
red flags. They must be gay. That, my friend, is simply called prejudice. Moreover, Kedar is not always accurate and still relies heavily on stereotypes. Otherwise, we won't use apps or gay bars to meet people and avoid embarrassing mistakes. Obviously, gay people make gay jokes. I'd even argue that we need more because more relatable content, please. But when we're doing this, please know that we're making fun of ourselves, our identities and sorrows instead of assigning labels. Think of slapstick comedies to help us cope. This Namjoon joke represents how we often have to hide and throw subtle hints. This one consoles us for the lack of representation. And yes, we know BDS songs aren't about those, but they do represent our experience as well, so... The context will be different with straight people who attempt to make gay jokes as insult or accusation. Of course, there must be gay people who take the jokes too far. But most of the time, we know how bad it is to be outed. In this case, the jokes are on us. If it's harmless, don't take it too seriously. If straight people don't find it funny, well, the jokes aren't for you. Do our jokes have to be heteronormative too? This is the most confusing part for me. It could be seen as progressive, but at the same time, not really. Apart from the widespread practice of queer baiting, Recently, there has been a drastic surge of gay content in South Korea. Companies like Lezin or Tapitoon publish numerous yaoi or boys love webtoons throughout the years, the major ones with explicit scenes. The industry doesn't shy away from promoting them. They post YouTube videos, create special bookshelves related to BL, and design seasonal yaoi themed restaurants. Things that seem unimaginable. But they're there. It must be strange for gay people in South Korea to see their sexualities being displayed and consumed like properties while the country itself doesn't accept them. Personally, I don't care about the character's sexuality while reading. A good story is a good story regardless of that. However, many of the stories hold onto stereotypes and portray toxic relationships. We can also see the lack of lesbian representation because the primary segmentation is straight girls instead of queer people. Wow, we're even singled out in content that should be ours. A more realistic portrayal can be seen in BL web dramas. Although we rarely see gay main characters in gay dramas, these miniseries start to fill that gap. Some idols from the lesser known group are sometimes assigned to star on this BL hopefully with their consent. So, there's a huge discrepancy between cultural values and cultural consumption. Honestly, I'm speechless on this topic. Nevertheless, I think the trend plays a part in shaping the shipping and fan service culture. The first time I came upon the idea of gay shipping, I was amazed by how many people support us as they normalize same-sex relationships. It made me happy, albeit short-lived, because the moment I got into it, I realized how wrong I was. In many cases, I see it as token shipping. For instance, some fans ship a pair for entertainment purposes, but against the idea of them being real. Are you kidding? The boys are going to end up marrying a woman and having kids someday, they believe. Like being gay is a phase that would pass once it's no longer palatable for the audiences. There is also a strange phenomenon when shipping starts as a replacement because they can't have the idol. Swooning over the boys with their bandmates is better than imagining them with other female celebrities. Pairing them with another member somehow make it bearable. In another case, some treat them as fictional characters instead of real people. Plus, the whole discussion about trying so hard to out them. To me, watching shipping videos can get to the point of 
traumatizing. I can sense the trace of heteronormativity everywhere in the shipping narratives. When one person is painted as more feminine than the pair because there must be the girl. When top bottom is a personality trait like MBDI rather than sexual positions that there's no way for us to know. And when jumping into a relationship is as easy as ABC, never considering the existence of deep-seated internal shame and lifelong struggle to accept themselves. When it gets to the point of ship wars and hating the other members because of jealousy, it's too much for me. They're all friends. If there's indeed a gay person or a couple within the group, the members are the ones who are going to protect, shield, and support them endlessly, not us. There's no reason to hate the strongest support system that they have. Heteronormativity and disrespect towards the community are the reason I've been wanting to leave the platform since F5. The aim of this video is not to assign labels or urge anyone to come out, but for fans to be open with the possibility that idols can be other than straight. Some of them might even be suffering in silence. Whether we like it or not, it's a fact that we all have to accept. I'll never get tired of saying this. Stop assuming work both ways. Knowing the ideas is something else, but knowing the person we care about is gay, or is probably gay, is a different experience. Suddenly, the distant idea is real. Their pains become our pains. We begin to worry about their future and we sincerely wish for their happiness. Perhaps our love for the idols can be a bridge to broaden our way of thinking and empathy that will benefit both the closeted idols and the community. It's ironic that many fans find emotional and psychological comfort in K-pop idols while at the same time, the industry itself is the amalgamation of all things that might ruin the idols' mental health. And like, I get that, because that's, that's business, but then it's very misleading for the younger generation that can't differentiate between a product and the human behind the product, yeah. right? So there's Mickey Mouse in his Mickey Mouse costume at this, he never breaks character. <laughs> Figuring out and coming to terms with different identities while being in the spotlight as tough as it is, so we don't have to complicate it further by perpetuating compulsory heterosexuality and heteronormativity. Normalize idols being themselves and try to separate the persona from the real person. The problem with being idols is fans put them on a narrow yet slippery pedestal built upon projected hopes and fears. My intention is not to say that the idol is being fake, but for fans to appreciate their efforts and acknowledge that no, we don't own them. And yes, they owe nothing to us. Apart from supporting idols who already came out like Holland and Somye, we can use more gender-neutral terms in daily life. For instance, asking, are you seeing anyone instead of, do you have a girlfriend? Or changing, his future wife must be so lucky to, his future partner must be so lucky. It's simple but meaningful enough. We'll take any breadcrumbs of acceptance out there. In the end, we can only speculate until the idols come out. Appearances and mannerisms don't always tell. Shipping is a constant expecting with no definite answer. Since we don't know the idols personally, we can only help by promoting a more accepting fandom than spreading awareness to smoothen whatever path they might take in the future. It's a long journey, but what else can we do? Let's put the seed out there and make it bloom and multiply in spirit. If there's one precious takeaway from shipping or anything really, like standing a boy group or reading a gay webtoon, it's when we become a better person after than before. Don't forget to check the video description for more references. Like, comment, and subscribe are appreciated to help the channel. Goodbye!